Hey everybody, it's Merrill. Uh, today we're going to do something different. I made this video for my viewers who feel that they've graduated from my step-by-step -step videos and need another challenge. Um, as usual, in this video, we're going to be using pencil and paper and a blending tool of some sort. So, in other words, um, that can be a blending stump, that can be a paintbrush. Um, if you don't have either of those, just use a Q-tip. Um, and for the first time, I'm actually going to give you some required viewing. Um, I worked really, really hard on a human proportion tutorial a while back, um, and I think it's very high quality, and it will definitely help you with this exercise. So all you have to do is um, click the image on the screen, and it'll take you to that, and then you can always come back to this video. Um, also, if you wish, hit the link in the video description and you can download this image uh, so that you can print it out so that you have a paper reference image while you draw. Um, I'll also post this image on the screen so you don't have to hit the link in the video description. Your first job is to see two shapes, the figure and the background. I want you to lightly, and I repeat lightly, scribble in the general shape of the figure. Um, start to notice the relationship between the head and the hips. The head is almost directly over her left leg and her hip is sticking out to the right. Uh, notice the width of the arms compared to the torso. Notice uh, where the fingertips end. Um, it might be helpful to know that when our arms are fully extended to the side, um, like when we give somebody a hug, that measurement from fingertip to fingertip uh, is very close to our height. Um, so that should help you with the length of the arms. Um, also, be sure to notice the shape made by the negative space underneath the left arm. I'm developing the shading a little earlier than I would with my step-by-step -step videos. Um, the shading actually helps me with uh, future placements. A shadow forms a shape, and I use these shadow shapes to help me place highlights and uh, other shadows, uh, for instance. Um, when you're developing the left arm, um, be sure to notice that the shape uh, the shape that is formed in between. Um, when a limb is kind of like away from the body, um, it creates uh, a sp uh, shape in the negative space, um, and you can use that uh, to figure out the placement. Uh, but notice, um, even though I am doing some shading, none of it is really dark. I'm just using a regular HB pencil um, and really nothing else. And I'm not pressing hard because uh, I'm going to be moving this uh, around quite a bit. Um, use the reference image uh, as well as my drawing, um, uh, but you know, especially stick with the reference image because I'm still trying to figure out the placements, um, and that is, uh, you know, that's what you do. You you keep looking, um, you keep trying to figure out the correct placements, and you use all of the clues that are left for you, and they can be the edges, um, you know, of say articles of clothing or uh, the hair. Um, or it could be the shapes that are created from various tones, from highlights, from shadows. Um, you're all looking for that as clues, and you're, um, you're thinking about this like it's a jigsaw puzzle. You're putting the puzzle together, seeing how things fit together. Um, and, you know, if this is the first time that you're doing this, you have to have reasonable expectations. You're going to get there in time. You just have to keep practicing. This actually might be a good place for you to pause the video. Um, and uh, just uh, observe what I have at this point. Um, it's going to change quite a bit, but uh, notice how I'm developing it. Um, I'm looking for edges of shapes. Um, I'm just doing basic shading. Um, the edges uh, can move in and out. Like you'll see a little bit later on, the arms are going to get thinner um, and the legs are going to get uh, thinner, especially at the knee point. Um, the hips are going to get a little bit wider. And when you draw, these little millimeters really count. Um, so, um, you know, make sure that you have the placement correct and use all of the clues that you have available to you. I'll give you a hint. I used um, an 8x10, 8.5x11 uh, rather, uh, piece of uh, drawing paper. That's about the size of uh, printer paper. But um, it will be a lot easier uh, especially with the face, if you use a bigger piece of paper. Um, the problem that I ran into uh, with this drawing is I have a, you know, a regular pencil. I'm not using a mechanical pencil, uh, which has a, a finer tip. But um, with a regular pencil, um, you're going to be challenged to add those really, really small details. 
Um, even though that tip seems really small, you actually need something smaller. And you'll struggle to get the details with even a mechanical pencil, um, you know, if you... Um, if you're drawing on a small sheet of paper. I would say ideal for this because uh, you don't want it to be too big because it'll take forever to shade. I, I would say um, 11 by 17. Uh, that, that would be ideal for this. Uh, in retrospect, I wish that I used uh, something like that. Um, the neck, uh, there's a very strong shadow right next to it, so you're seeing me add that shape right there, um, or add the edge of the hair, um, and I'm trying to do some measuring right now. Um, I'm trying to see, um, you know, how thin the hair is at the top. Uh, you know, when women have uh, long hair, um, it's a very thin, uh, n not that their hair is uh, thin, um, you know, per se, but the shape that's created, um, you know, it, it gravity brings it down, um, and it's usually thinner at the top, wider at the bottom. Um, I'm figuring out the width. I'm using the shoulders uh, to really figure out, um, you know, how wide the hair is. And I edit it, and I slightly um, change the placements. Um, I'm noticing that there's a little bit more of a tilt to the head. Um, I'm always looking at it from a distance. That really helps also. Um, you want to step back and look at both the reference image and your drawing from a distance to see uh, how things look. And I didn't notice that the tilt of the head was tilted a little bit um, to her right um, until I took a step back. Now here's the catch, uh, and this is what you have to realize when you draw. You have no choice but to use a fine tip uh, when you use a pencil. And really, when you look around and take a look around the room, take a look at uh, if anybody is sitting next to you, or you know, call your brother and sister into the room and carefully inspect them, there are no lines on them. So the challenge to getting a realistic likeness is to get rid of all of the lines. Yes, I'm telling you now, use lines to help you get the edges of shapes. But the way that we are going to progress uh, from this point on, once we have the placement, is we are going to consider the edges. That is super important. I would say that is, if, if you're looking to get something uh, realistic looking, you want to get rid of as many edges as you can. Uh, all of them would be ideal. So. Uh, I am carefully looking at my reference image, and we are getting rid of all of those edges. Um, you know, and, you know, if it, for instance, look at the pants. Yes, I know, I realize that, you know, it's a white background and there's a pretty dark edge. But if you look at the bottom of the pants versus the uh, top of the pants, that's a very different dark value at the bottom of the pants than it is at the top. And this is where you have to train your eyes to see tones. Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, in-between grays between the darkest points, which seems to be the bottom of the legs, uh, the eyes, the hair, um, the area underneath her arms. Those are dark points. Um, and the lightest points, which seems to be on her belt and upper chest, uh, right underneath um, the neck area. Um, those seem to be the darkest points. So really, you want to really look at... Uh, this image, you want to dissect it as much as you can. The more you look, the more you notice, the better that you're going to be at drawing. And that's something super important that you need to remember. If you're somebody that just tries to draw from memory, you are not going to get this. But if you're somebody that observes, you are. The eraser is a uh, drawing tool as well. Uh, that's often forgotten. Uh, but once you have the tones in, and I recommend uh, at every point in this drawing to have at least some uh, graphite uh, on the page, uh, maybe with the exception of the background, um, but use the eraser to carve out the, the highlights on that. Um, I use a blending tool quite a bit. Um, some instructors do not like blending tool, uh, but, um, you know, I was always taught with it. Uh, I think that it helps. Uh, I, I think that you need to use whatever tool uh, that you can to help you. But my point is you can use the blending tool um, or the paintbrush or the Q-tip to move uh, some of the graphite around uh, from the original uh, placement of it um, and then you can use the eraser to create a highlight. 
and even if you use the uh, the blending stump for a second, um, it, it's not going to be, or, or just for a, a small area rather, um, it's not going to be as light as it originally was. So uh, from there, you could kind of like carve out the highlights. Because notice, the highlight um, on the belt um, and the highlight on the neck, they're both uh, slightly darker in tone than the background. Um, and remember, whenever you're drawing on a white piece of paper, and usually that is always the case, um, your highlights have to be somewhat different than that. Take a second to notice the difference between this face uh, and uh, some of the portraits that I do. Um, notice how big my hand is uh, compared to how small that little space is. That's what I meant uh, before when I said use bigger paper if you can. Um, you know, because you really don't have the room to maneuver the pencil. Um, it, it's like playing, um, it, it, I don't know if anybody, uh, I'm dating myself here. There was a game when I was a kid called Operation, and you really had to have super steady hands um, or else you would lose that game. And, uh, you know, basically, you're kind of doing the same thing. You are working in a very small area with a very difficult to use uh, tool, uh, a pencil, you know, because you need different pressures, you need a, a, a thin enough point, and the more that you use a pencil, the more dull that the point gets, you know, so you have a lot of stuff that's working against you. If you draw really small, that's the challenge that you have. If you use a mechanical pencil, uh, that will definitely help you, but, um, just keep that in mind when you draw. Um, you know, you don't. You want to have uh, slightly altered expectations. Um, you know, it, it's it's not going to come out looking exactly like the picture, uh, unless if you use um, you know the big enough paper. Um, I kind of feel that the whole entire purpose is not to make it look uh, like uh, you know the printout. That would be kind of boring because the printout exists already. Um, in terms of the tones. Uh, printers really flatten out the tones, so I think it's best uh, if you use the reference image on the screen, but also, um, you know, alter your expectations uh, uh, for the darkest tones. You could use a Prismacolor pencil um, as the darkest dark or an ebony pencil, but it's still not going to be as dark as the printer ink. Uh, so, you know, have reasonable expectations with that. Um, there's an ex, uh, a, um, expression in painting called being painterly. Um, with drawing or being a good draftsman, you want to be, um, you, you want it to be drawing-like. Everybody makes fun of me, by the way, for the way that I say drawing. It's how we say it in Queens, so everybody deal with it, okay? There we go. Had to say that. Just kidding. I take no offense. I know I have the uh, funniest accent in the world. So, straight from Queens, New York City, baby. Now we are moving on to a really challenging area, the shirt and the, um, the folds of the clothing. Um, and we have to be uh, really careful here to, uh, to notice uh, all of the lights and darks. So I want you to do something right now. Take a look at the pants. Take a look at the belt. Um, you know, there's extreme lights and darks there. Notice that the shirt is neutral. Even the highlights, which are pretty light uh, relative to other parts of the drawing, they are not nearly as, um, as light as the belt, um, and the, the shadows are not nearly as dark as the pants, especially the area in between the legs. Uh, so we have to uh, shade accordingly with that. Um, if you see me use a blue pencil, that's a 2B pencil. If you see me use a black pencil, uh, know that that is a, uh, a 5B pencil. Uh, the area in the lower legs, that's going to be a really, really dark area. Uh, and that's going to be the, uh, the 5B pencil uh, right over there. Notice that there is, it's, it's mostly gray in the shirt. Uh, so, you know, you want to pick up a little bit with your eraser. You can use your eraser to create those highlights. But certainly every area um, on the shirt, at least at some point, should be covered with some graphite.
at this point of the drawing, it's all about edges. Uh, really start to notice the difference, uh, say, between, uh, or once again, between the bottom of the pants and the upper pants. Um, the fingers, especially, you see me doing the hand, or you saw me doing the hand, and um, there's very there's a lot of differences. For instance, on the left hand, uh, look at the area in between the pointer finger and the thumb. Um, it's very dark, but the outside and all the way up the wrist, um, it's kind of light. It's very close uh, to the color of the paper. But um, I'm getting rid of the line. You know, I don't want the line uh, to be there because really there is no lines. There are edges, but there are no lines. That statement might confuse you a little. That's what you got to figure out to get better at drawing. Um, you know, edges can be something as soft as, um, you know, using the blending stump, um, you know, without even like creating an edge with the pencil, using the remnants of the graphite from when you had rubbed in the past with the uh, blending stump, and just creating an edge just using that. Um, often I do that instead of using the pencil. I just, I push an edge down, um, and that gives it a much softer, um, you know, edge. Uh, you can do something like that with the wrists. Uh, it might be helpful, um, you know, for that and other areas. You have hard edges on the pants. You have hard edges um, between, uh, and this is really deceptive. If you look at the shirt, um, in between the arm and the shirt, you kind of have a hard edge there. But it varies a lot in tone. Really, look for that, um, especially after you get the placement. You know, look for those edges. Um, and notice those gradual transitions. The more you train your eye to do that, the better off that you're going to be. I'd like to say, uh, as I wrap this up, it took me about an hour and a half to do this. Um, don't rush this. Pause the video at different points if you haven't done so already. Um, you know, watch it again. Um, take your time with this. You can't really rush it. Um, you know, make sure that you see those edges. Make sure that you see those shapes. And, you know, essentially what I do on this channel is I teach people how to see. I teach people what to look for. And it's okay to deviate from the process. Every artist has a slightly different way of uh, doing what he or she does. But, um, you know, just be sure to notice, uh, you know, what I want you to take from this video. Notice those shapes. Notice those edges. Um, have them work to get together, um, you know, as best as you can. And... When they do, uh, that's when you have a good drawing. Anyway, I hope that this video helped you, and um, you know I thank you for watching it. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up, um, a favorite, um, or post it on your Facebook wall. Uh, spread the word, man. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.